Welcome to this edition of Rod Shop Lockdown. Man, we have a awesome show for you guys today. King of the Whip. Yes. Uh, if you guys don't know about King of the Whip, you better watch this show. Dude. This is this is one of the most exciting events in the country, and it is still going to happen. Uh, so yeah, we'll be crossing over to Ryan from the Spay, who heads up King of the Whip, and he'll be telling us all about this great event. And yeah, we are seriously excited. But first, uh, this episode is brought to you by the guys of LW Mag. Now, LW Mag is it's really, really cool. So it's basically a one-stop shop for everything that is awesome. And when we talk about that, I mean, motocross, freestyle, tattoos, hot girls, skateboarding, surfing, snowboarding, um it's like a generation x explosion go check out the website go check out the stuff they've got there's some links to games and stuff as well really cool i really like this brand um i really like the site actually so yeah so so go check out the really cool stuff um and they are the guys behind king of the book right we are live with ryan from the Spay. how are you doing my how are you thanks for having me yeah, good, good. Now, for all our guys out there, just give us a bit of background who you are and you know, how you got involved in all okay, of this cool. madness. Well, I suppose things, things kind of got underway back in 2005 where a group of us got together and started a magazine called Locally Whipped. Um, it was a print magazine with the main core focus on action sports, uh, music and lifestyle. So the ball kind of got rolling then in terms of the way we got into the industry and uh, you know, I started getting the nose of how things happen and what was going on. And so we printed for five years and then from there moved completely online um, as LW Mag now. And same core content, action sports, extreme sports, music, lifestyle, tattoos, models, uh, quite, a, quite a variety of uh, things we cover. And being in the media, we obviously were invited to a lot of events and we covered a lot of events through the years um, from, you know, all the extreme sports things, the freestyle motocross things, the mountain bike events, wakeboarding, snowboarding, the whole variety of them. And I think from being involved with those events, you obviously learned a lot over the years and we actually started hosting our own events. Um, one of them being Winter Whip was actually the first one, which is a snowboarding event that we run in Lesotho um, at Afri Ski Mountain Resort. Um, so that event's been running for eight years. And then in 2017, we decided to put King of the Whip together. So King of the Whip is basically a, it's a freestyle motocross slash motocross show, um, but competition at the same time. We actually put the top South African motocross riders against the freestyle motocross riders and see who can do the biggest whip. And the guy that does the biggest one at the end of the day walks away with a cash prize. So the first one was in 2017. It ended up being way bigger and better than what we ever thought. We ran it at the little sand quarry behind um, Biker's Warehouse in North Riding. Um, so we've been hosting it there. It's been there for the last three years. It's grown bigger and better every year. Last year we had about five, 6,000 people there and we just couldn't fit any more people in it. It was actually, it was awesome, but it was insanely messy. It was, we, we call it control mayhem. It was just, it was insane. By the, by the time the finals came up, the, the crowd was coming in closer to where the riders were riding. It was just, it was crazy. And then for this year, we actually got approached by Monte Casino to host the event there. Um, so the event taking place in Monte Casino. Um, it was supposed to happen last weekend on the 18th of April, but unfortunately, with the situation we are in now, it's been postponed. So we're looking at hosting it. So we're looking at a couple of dates in September. We it most likely will happen then. Obviously, we've got to just see what happens with this whole coronavirus situation. But I think it'll be okay in September to host it. Awesome. So for the guys that don't know, what what is a whip? <laughs> so a whip I mean, we, we, we're car guys i mean yeah, you yeah. guys are bringing the bike stuff in explain to us what is the whip sure. so a whip is basically the easiest way to explain it is basically the oldest trick in the motocross and freestyle motocross um, scene it was probably one of the first things guys did um just to kind of put some style together in the air and it's basically when a guy's riding his bike and he throws it sideways in the air and there's just so many variations of it now um, the guys in the racing side of things, the motocross guys and supercross guys, actually use it to scrub speed over jumps to get down to the ground quicker and obviously get on the gas quicker. Um, but at the same time, it's just, it looks so stylish that it's become, you know, one of those things that everyone wants to do. And funny enough, it's actually one of the harder things to do. So not everyone can do a whip. 
so yeah, it's, it's just grown into a, a place now where there's so many different variations of it. Um, you know, there's turn ups, turn downs. You know, guys going backwards, getting the bike almost 180 backwards, getting it completely upside down. And the crazy thing is they're actually able to bring it back before they land. I mean, if they don't, they'll die. Like I said, it's been around forever, and it's it's just cool to be able to take the two different genres being motocross and the racing side of things and then take the freestyle guys who to basically their livelihood is just doing tricks and backflips and things like that yeah. and bring them together and see who can do the best one and yeah. i think from the crowd participation and even experience it's just insane because i mean those bikes are, like i said are going backwards in the air and it's to, to see how they bring them back is insane and the only way they can actually bring them back is to rev the motorcycle as hard as possible so the sound everything that's involved in the whole experience of watching it is just, it's crazy. So, you know, Freestyle Motocross has been around for years and there's been a lot of shows in the country um, and it's always an exciting factor to watch, but when you can actually bring more riders together from all different parts of the country and different uh, genres of riding and put them in one setting and they're all doing the exact same thing, you know, it's just much more exciting to watch. But it must also just be good to get all the riders together in general, the camaraderie and, you know, how the guys interact and, and that type of stuff. Oh, yeah, right? definitely. I mean, it's cool to have them all there. I think it's something that's become quite exciting for them as a yearly event. You know, I mean, like I said, the amount of people they have at the events is crazy and the amount of support the riders actually end up getting is crazy. So I think for them, it's just uh, become like one of the biggest, thing on the biggest things on their calendar. And, yeah, just seeing what the guys are able to do and, and you know, participate together and have a good time at the event and the events ultimately is for them at the end of the day um, and be able to showcase what they can do is obviously one of our main goals yeah so you were saying you're getting some a bunch of local guys and everyone together can you give us some of the names of, of the guys who's actually coming in through this to this year's event yeah, yeah 100 percent. so i mean you, you're gonna have all the freestyle guys there so you've got the likes of Dylan goldman um nick devitt scotty billet you know all kind of big names in this country in terms of what they've done nick nick devitt is one of the the ogs of freestyle motocross the first local guy to do a backflip and a superman backflip and things like that so to have him riding is, is really cool um Dylan goldman probably one of the best riders in the country at the moment uh, he's won king of the whip before he came uh, second last year, second last year. So you know he's going to be there. He's up there for sure. Scotty Billet, who won last year, um, he was looking good getting ready for this this event that was supposed to happen on the 18th, and he'll be there again. And then you look at the likes of the motocross riders, the motocross riders, and we've got some of the top guys like David Goosen, who's you know multiple national champion. The first event we actually had Richie van der Vestazen riding, who's a 12-time South African national motocross champion. You know, probably the best, one of the best riders the country's ever seen. He rode the first one, which was awesome to have him ride, and now he's one of our judges, actually. So he's taken a seat back and just chills and watches the event. And Josh Malimi is also one of the top motocross riders. He actually placed third last year. Um, we'll hopefully have him riding. He's in America at the moment, training and getting into the riding scene over there. Um, but I'm hoping he'll be back in September to be able to ride. You've got Maddie Milan, you know, all the top motocross riders. Right now, we're talking to a lot of them as well. Um, it obviously depends at the, t at the time, you know, who's injured, who's not injured, who's available to ride, all those type of things. That's why setting the date hasn't been confirmed just, just yet because we've got to make sure we don't clash with any other event. Um, doesn't come to close to any of the motocross nationals, so the guys are happy to ride this in case they crash, they can still have time to heal, or whatever the case is. But, yeah, we'll probably have about... 20 to 30 local riders at the event, which is quite big for a whip competition. If you look at the whip competitions yeah. that the guys hold overseas for X Games and at the Supercross and so on, you know, they normally have about eight to 10 riders. So for us to put that many together um, is quite awesome. So this will be the first year we've got some internationals uh, joining the event. Um, two are actually coming from America and Fast House South Africa are bringing them out. So a big shout out to them. Um, that's going to be Patrick Evans and Darren Durham. Um, so those guys are going to throw it down. Um, they're super excited to get Joe, so they'll be out. Um, then we've got another rider from Spain coming. Um, his whips are massive, so he's going to be here, uh, obviously, competing for the crown. Um, so those are the confirmed guys. Hopefully, they are able to make it at the new date. So obviously, we'll discuss them as we get a bit closer. Um, and then, yeah, we turn to a couple of other Europeans and Americans that are interested in coming. It's just to see if we can get, to, get them here um, at that time. So we'll obviously keep the public posted. Um, we'll announce as we go along of who's going to be here, but there will be some international riders at this year's King of the Whip. For, for guys that's never been, what, what can they expect? I mean, from, from rocking up, is it just the, the, the yeah. Whip event? Have you guys got other stuff running on at the same time? 
Yeah, we've actually changed it up a bit over the last few years. So the first year was just whips. Um, it starts off with the qualifying rounds and goes into the finals. Last year, we changed it up a bit just to bring more excitement to the event. So basically, how it will run is we'll probably start, the doors will open at 2 o'clock in the afternoon or start about 4 in the afternoon in terms of the riding will start happening. Um, with the qualifying rounds, and that's when we split the guys up and actually put them into four to five groups. And from there, the top scoring guys through all of those rounds will go into the semi-final and into the final. Um, in between the qualifying rounds and the semis and finals, we actually have a freestyle motocross competition. We've put that in to bring that element to it as well and also more excitement for the you know spectators that are there. And what we do with that is we actually have two comps. So we've got one right side up check, so the guys jumping normally and doing the supermans and cliffhangers and things like that. And then the upside down version where the guys are doing backflip variations, um, you know, so which is quite cool and obviously super exciting for the crowds and, and the families that come through and watch the event. From there, it starts going into night time. We will go into the semifinals of the whip and then the finals of the whip. Um, and that goes down, like I said, at night time with pyrotechnics happening. It's just a non-stop action packed. The guys are in the air all the time. It's, it's crazy. It's something you have to be at to see. It's, it's, it's flipping awesome. I think after, after this lockdown, the, everyone's going to be screaming to get out. And that's probably <laughs> sure. one of the best nights to, to get out there. I do feel sorry for everyone in the four ways area. Because uh, <laughs> it's well, going to be loud. <laughs> the warnings from Monte Casino about the noise. So it's going to be quite funny. So we're actually not allowed to play music or have the commentator at a certain des over a certain decibel. But the box they just have to live with. So right. it's going to be quite funny once they actually see how much noise those things make. But I mean, that's part of the whole show. It's, it's going to exactly. be you got to have the noise there. you got to have that excitement. And like I said, it's nonstop. So there will be other things happening at the event. Like there will be bar areas and food areas. And they'll have other guys doing little um, activations on the side. And, you know, part of the sponsors that are involved at the event as well will be doing their, their stuff. So it's not going to be like come in and sit down for seven hours and watch one thing. We want to try to keep the core element to it, um, which has been over the last few years, where people can come in and actually walk around, go meet the riders, go chat to them, you know, and just enjoy yourself. Instead of, like I said, we don't want someone to come sit in the stands for seven hours and get bored after three hours, you know, or, you know whatever the case is. The last few years has been, like I said, has been really core in terms of where it's been held. So at that same quarry, it wasn't, it, was not, it wasn't cornered off anywhere. It was just there and, you know, people go do whatever they want. Um, and I think we don't really want to lose that. Obviously, with it being in Monty, there are, more rules that we have to abide by and you know that comes down to safety which we completely understand we don't want anyone to get hurt or kids to get hurt or things like that but we, we've made we've worked out ways to just keep that core factor there so you know if kids come with their families and they want to meet the riders i'll be able to go to the rider pits get signatures look at the bikes do things like that um you know in the activation areas we'll have monster energy will be there doing a whole bunch of stuff playstation will be there doing a whole bunch of stuff pringles will be there doing a whole bunch of stuff motel will be there doing a whole bunch of stuff um so they're all going to bring their own elements as well um you know and have people have stuff for people to interact with whether it's watching uh, the trials guys hop the bikes over there their portable rig to you know gaming things a whole bunch of stuff so you know and like i said obviously the, the guys can go to the bar and chill there for as much as they want and go to the food areas. Um, the thing that's cool is everything happens in the air. So no matter where you are in you the vicinity, area, you'll be able to watch the action anyway. So uh, I think the grandstand is just a bonus to when you want to go sit down, you can sit down and it'll be placed in a position where you've got the best views of what's happening. Going the casino, going to the, the route of to a casino, why, why take that, that step uh, for you guys? I think it's just, it's something that we heard, we knew Monte Casino has been, been wanting to get the event uh, for a while. And they actually um, sent some people out to watch the event last year, which I don't know about it until afterwards. And we met with them afterwards and they, they had come to the event and they hadn't ever seen anything like that in their life. So they were completely blown away. They were a bit skeptic, skeptical of how raw it was. Like I said, I mean, you could get, you could literally get onto the track whenever you wanted to. So from that point of view, they were like, we can do it in Monty, where we just need to be, you know, a bit more safe and more organized, which is which is fine. Um, but I think just to have a venue like that for an event like this is a big thing for us. I mean, the whole thing about having this event is, like I said earlier, not only for the riders, it's for the spectators as well. At the same time, to grow it to a place, you know, we don't know how far it can go, but to a place where it actually could become an international event. Um, and I think holding it at a place like Monte Casino takes it to that next level. The backdrop of Monte Casino is amazing. So the content that will come out from it is just going to blow people's minds. 
the the whole atmosphere of having at Monty. Like we we literally built this event up before it happened the 18th of April and a month before we obviously got put down on lockdown. So there was a lot of build up happening already and the hop around it was just ridiculous. I mean tickets are literally almost sold out already. What? But yeah, it was it's, it's it's insane. I mean, you can only fit a certain amount of people in there. At the moment, with the floor plan, it's between four and five thousand people, and we almost had that many tickets sold already. Um, and for anyone watching this, if you have got a ticket, your ticket is still valid for the new date. But I think just what they what Monte Casino offers as well as you know just the marketing plan behind it, um, the look and feel of it. I mean. King of the Whip is up on the main billboards at William Nickel. It's up on the main billboards around Monty. It's inside all the screens of Monty. Just the whole vision of it, I think, is just taking it to the next level. And it's just going to be mind-blowing. I mean, it's just a place where, you know, people can come. There's good access or easy access to safe parking, which we didn't have in the past. Then get in and watch an amazing show that's going to be going for seven hours. And then from there, either just cruise home or stay in the casino, you know, have a couple of drinks, go for dinner. It's, it's up to them. So I just think what it offers is a lot bigger and better um, for the event, for the riders, for the spectators, for everybody. It makes sense. I mean, look, we uh, companies in South Africa, we we all trying to to get our events to international standards, if you want to put it that way. And you know, especially the the smaller events, or something like this, that like you said, it's it's rough and ready. It was a lot of lot of improvements and stuff that can happen. Now you've got this big element like the Monty that comes in and they've got all those regulations. They've got that marketing. They've got all that type of thing. I mean, look, we, we, we've been over the last few episodes, we've been talking to guys about the motoring industry and the racing industry and, you know, how it needs that support. And there you guys have it. There's, your, there's a company that's now stepped in. It's helping to get an event to international standards. I think I think that's one of the key factors. I mean, to, to hold the event there is not a cheap exercise, but what they offer is, you know, you know, is you can't have passed it. It's something that you have to bite the bullet and, and make the event happen without a doubt. I mean, obviously it's it's an annual event and we want to keep it happening there. Um, we need to make this first one happen. And from, like I said, from the build up that we had, I mean, we we were a month away. The event was supposed to happen last Saturday. It would have been amazing. Like I said, it was almost sold out. I'm pretty sure it would have been sold out for the day we had it, would have had the event. Um, <clears throat> all the riders are ready, you know. And from Monty's side, it's it's not a cheap exercise to hold it there, but they just offer so much more in terms of how they market, you know, exactly. Who they bring. So from that point of view, it's worth it. Um, and then you also have to have a big shout out to the sponsors as well. I mean, the guys that have been involved. Um, from the event from the beginning, actually, um, you know, stuck by us and stuck to the event and they ultimately make it happen. And that's the likes of you know, Monster Energy have been there from day one. Motel have been there from day one. PlayStation have been there from day one. Um, Pringles is actually a new one. They're the title sponsor for this year's one. They, they're a new sponsor on board. Um, we're super excited to have them there. You know, and those with those guys coming on board, they actually ultimately make it happen. They, you know, put the funding into the event, which enables us to put it together and at the same time have good prize money for the riders you know the riders aren't riding for nothing they're going to be riding for you know decent prize cash and it makes sense for them to do that i mean it makes sense for them to put in the time to actually be the best you know guy that can whip a motocross exactly. bike out there and walk away with 40 to fifty thousand rand the the way you guys are going about this i mean you're showing as much as uh, if you, a lot of guys are talking about doom and gloom and stuff at the moment you guys are showing that the participation is there and it is yeah. still possible to set up and build up these, these big events and get the guys and stuff behind it. You know, it, it comes down to how you market and how, how you push. Definitely. I think, I think with King of the Whip, we, we're lucky in a sense of, you know, from August last year, we started promoting it to the sponsors. And okay, it's definitely happening at the Monte Casino, making that announcement out there, getting the guys on board. And we were so close to having, having the event happen before the lockdown. That when you, when that announcement came up, well, the first announcement was obviously the social distancing and no hosting of events. So then we had to sit down and, and contact all the sponsors, contact Monty, and see what's happening. So Monty, obviously, because we we, we were the first event that they were ha going to have next, have given us the first choice on the on the dates that come up, which is awesome. And then turn to the sponsors. I mean, the build up they they saw what the value was in it and what's what it's going to be so all of them were straight away said we're still on board so from that point of view we were super lucky but i think you know during this time it's, it's hard to 
possibly try to sell the idea to people if it was something new. But I mean, this isn't, and it's still something people are looking forward to. It's still something I think people are talking about. Uh, I mean, like 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 I said the, the, a couple of times already, the event's supposed to happen last weekend, and the amount of uh, messages we got last weekend just of fans, people we don't even know, just saying or coming onto the Facebook event page and saying, oh, I wish it was happening, can't wait, wait for it to happen, it'll all still be there. They're still showing their support, and it just shows that people are ready to get out at some point get back to some type of normality and they'll still be at these events and still be there, um, you know, supporting it. I think the bonus from doing these events um, and anyone else that are planning to do events is the content that comes out from these are going to, is going to reach a much higher and bigger places because there's no yes. content at them. So that is going to be a big bonus. And that that's something that you need to also show to, you know, the, the event partners and sponsors and so on that most likely they're going to get, triple amount of exposure from this because the marketing will start again around the event people will get to the event but when the mm. when the content comes out the amount of tv stations and radio stations and uh online publications and print magazines and so on that actually want the content to use uh, will be bigger than ever before because they're looking for content now yeah um, exactly so nothing new has happened in the last six months <laughs> last three months <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Everyone's going back to, you know, throwbacks and just, just posting like stuff that's happened in the past, but now it's going to get to a stage where everyone's going to run out. So I think events and content creation and stuff is something that's going to be very important in the next couple of months, um, you know, just to feed people's addiction to content. Yeah, dude, thank you so much for being on the show and all the best. Sorry, I, I, I can't wait to to get myself down. I, I'll definitely get my ass down to, to Joburg for this one. And by the sounds of it, I better go buy it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's crazy, man. I mean, we, we obviously, we obviously offered people to, to refund their tickets. Um, when, when, when you heard about this whole, whole thing and literally is under 200 people or 200 tickets were, were refunded. Really? So, I mean, if you look at that, it just shows what the support is for it, um, which I think is great. So, but like I said, people have tickets to, to remain valid, so they'll be able to use a ticket and come watch the event. Like I said, it will be in September. Um, then we'll re release ticket sales again and start promoting again. But people will see it. It'll be all over social media. Well, dude, let's hope we'll bring you back in September then to, to tell us more about the event and, and that type of stuff <laughs> when you're ready. Whose suit is sitting behind you? <laughs> that is my Biomix kit from... I won the SA Championships. I was SA number one in 1997, 1998. 1998. Nice. Oh, that's like a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I, that was my next race kit. I, I was staring at that and I'm like, there must be something interesting behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, sorry to the petrol heads. It's not, a, it's not a, a proper suit. It's a motocross kit that I used to race BMX when I was, when I was a lighty. So, 1998 South African champion. Nice, nice. Dude, listen, thank you so much for talking to us. Good luck with the event. We uh, all it. the best. Thank you so much. All right, man. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Let's see.